And uh, welcome to our weekly market recap for the week of May 11th uh, to May 15th. Um, my name is Michael DeJoyer. I'm the uh, Director of Institutional Sales here at Das Trader, and I'm joined uh, today and always by Jill Melandrino. Jill, how are you doing? Good. Doing well. Finally, some amazing weather in the Northeast for us. Yes, and I'm, I'm down here from Florida, and it's looking beautiful here as well. Um, you know, it's amazing how how different it is here in Florida than it was in New York. Everything was, you know, closed up, buttoned up tight. And here in Florida, it's very, very open and uh, and not really um, not really closed up at all. In fact, uh, I was surprised at how many restaurants and bars and everything's all, all pretty much back. It's very empty. Um, you know, a lot less people you know moving around, as, as I would hope is the case. But um, but it's certainly uh, much more normal down here and um you know up east so how is uh how what, what are your thoughts on the uh on the whole covid crisis uh jill for this week you know it's really interesting there was someone on he's a restaurant owner um and it sounded I, I got bits and pieces of it but it sounded like his chain was in texas and tennessee and he said that the mood there was really encouraging his employees were excited to come back to work he offered 100 percent of them positions back 80 percent have accepted and while they're running at 25%. Um, he, they're taking a really interesting strategic approach where they, they are learning to embrace social distancing and how to incorporate that into their business strategy. This way, when things ramp up more, they're using the slow time to get used to it, to um, think about the strategy as things open up and to be nimble and be able to pivot. And I thought that was really encouraging because a lot of what we've heard has either been, we're not ready for this or I'm going to do what I want to do. It's my life. So I thought it was really interesting um, and a sigh of relief to hear someone who was being thoughtful and deliberate and strategic. Uh, and hopefully we can learn some lessons from that. My concern is all these places like Wisconsin is a good example. Some parts of Florida are a great example. With everyone coming back and being flippant towards this health crisis, um, I don't think it really matters what happens in the next week or two, uh, but I think the data is really going to count in the next three to four weeks when we can start to see what lack of social distancing means in terms of um, health care and treatment. So um, it's definitely a, a tale of two tapes, but I certainly think that the restaurant owner in Texas and Tennessee uh, had a really good approach to it where he's embracing this is our new normal and adopting their model going forward. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's very interesting to see how Florida is different from Tampa, uh, you know, to uh, going down towards Palm Beach County uh, and Orlando. So as you kind of went further south, uh, it it was uh, much more serious, taken much more seriously, um, you know. Whereas Tampa was was virtually not affected, and and you know, uh, Broward County and and Miami Beach was, and obviously people are are much more. Taking it much more seriously, the the twenty five percent rule is much you know it's much more obviously adhered to. Whereas, um, you know, in Tampa, I really couldn't see it being applied at all, uh, meaning every table was full. Um, but as you got as I went to or you know when I went to Orlando, it was definitely you know 25 percent was being applied. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it seems to be that the places that were more affected are the places that, um, you know, uh, are, are taking it more seriously and, and, and with a little bit more, um, uh, it's very funny because I, I noticed also when, when people come off at, at the, by the airport area in Tampa, people coming off the airplanes look, you know, like they were, you know, traveling from out of space, you know, from like the Northeast. And then the, they were getting to the hotel where people were just dressed normal and not wearing masks. And, and it was just like a very, very strange thing to watch. Um, yeah. And, and that's concerning to me. Um, and it's encouraging to see that social distancing is being respected in places that have had to deal with it. But the concern to me is um, perhaps places that did not have as much of an, an issue or less dense populations. And the issue with that is, should they get a massive surge like we saw in more dense areas, they don't necessarily have the infrastructure or the healthcare available to uh, take care of everybody, which is why mm -hmm. it was such um, 
crisis for us in the New York, New Jersey metro area, while we might have had, we just didn't have enough infrastructure. And we saw that firsthand and, and you saw the response that was required just yeah. to, you know, even get through day to day. So um, if you thought it was tough for New York and New Jersey, where um, from a distance perspective, it's easier to get resources there. It's going to be more difficult for these less dense areas that are far more spread out to allocate resources. So um, I, you know, I just hope everyone uh, is aware of that, that, that might, you mm -hmm. know, be packing into the bars and, and the restaurants clearly um, you don't you get what you wish for. Like that, that's not how I think, but I, I'm just really concerned that should there be major spikes they're just not going to have the resources. Yes, absolutely. Um, well, getting on to a note about the market. So the, the one sector, okay that seems to be getting heavily shorted and obviously nobody knows for sure but but one of the things that we do look look for and watch is short interests and short interest seems to be increasing in of all sectors the biotech sector so um what is a sector that might potentially be looking to get shorted um you know i, I was a little surprised to see the biotech so what are your thoughts on this uh, Jill, that um, that that biotechs. Do you think that maybe traders are thinking that biotechs have kind of gotten overdone? I think part of it is going to be it's um, so many of them have run up as people are trying to figure out who's going to be the front runner when it comes to vaccines, when it comes to treatments. We're all, we're starting to hear some talk where there have been companies that are selected that will get um, priority. Um, I think of the right word, priority, uh, prioritization through the approval process. Um, mm -hmm. So I think there's going to be a couple of outliers that shake out there. Um, you can also make the argument that once you see short interest in other indicators get out of, you know, get significantly higher, could that be a contrarian indicator? I don't think so. I just think it's going to be biotech and healthcare is going to be almost like what retail is, the haves and the have nots. Um, mm -hmm. As we start to make more progress with treatment. Um, but I think, you know, I've had a number of healthcare professionals on my show. Um, we've had a number of biotech companies, NASDAQ with the biotech companies on my show as well. And, and the common theme that I keep hearing is that we're sticking in a tunnel with a one-off treatment for a specific disease. And they're, they're looking at technologies where these applications can be used for future pandemics and other kinds of diseases. So I think um, it's gonna be interesting to see what the outcome is and how the medicines and science and the techniques behind developing the vaccines can be applied towards other um, viruses. Because at the end of the day, viruses do mutate. That, that's what they do. This is nothing new. But I think looking for treatment beyond just the specific one um, is really going to be key. Yes, absolutely. I think I think that that people are realizing that buying in the entire biotech sector just because there's a pandemic. It, it whatever happens, you know, meaning if they do come up with a cure, they do come up with some kind of treatment, um, that's not going to be a boon for the entire sector. Okay. It's, it's not going to be a boon that you don't just buy all biotechs because we're having a pandemic. And I think that they kind of got overdone as people were guessing about, you know, which one was going to be, um, you know, be, be the front runner. Um, and then here you could see the chart. I mean, the chart, on the this is the biotech index the biotech etf it ran from the the 115 area all the way up to the 157 area so you're, you're talking a, a 40 point move um which is a tremendous run up and uh, it just makes sense for number one for there to be profit taking and for number two um for some you know short sellers to think that maybe this is ready to come in uh, you know, even, you know, that it's overdone um, and that maybe that it's going to come into that probably 137 area. So it just seems like it's a logical trade, um, you know, in a sector that has really, really run up tremendously. So the, the next chart that I brought up here uh, is, is uh, the NASDAQ 100, the QQQ. And what I did this week uh, is I brought up, um, I brought up the weekly and the daily chart. So the, the reason I did this is because when you look at the, the daily chart, um, you can see obviously that this is a, a very smoothly uptrending uh, above all of its moving averages. Obviously, the NASDAQ has been the true leader uh, in this with technology companies you know, holding up very well during the pandemic. But when you, you put it to the weekly chart, you notice that we've actually gotten up 
into the area that we gapped down from when the pandemic really started getting going, which is which is basically at the um, you know at the end of February. And you could see that we've kind of come all the way up into the area of, of potentially a lower high if this is the top or a double top, which is a little further away. Uh, but it really puts puts into perspective, um, you know, that we potentially have had a, a tremendous, tremendous bounce back. And you can see that V-shaped uh, pattern. Now, whether it stays a V or not, currently it is a V. Um, so any any thoughts on that, uh, you know, Jill, and, and, and talking about the NASDAQ and its continued prospects? Yeah, this also goes back to what you were saying with biotech and the run that it's had. So while the NASDAQ 100 is associated with uh, technology, just about 55 to 56 percent of the index is technology. There's also heavily weighted towards consumer services and healthcare. Now, many of those healthcare names in the NASDAQ 100 are leading the fight against COVID-19, but there is that biotech component in there. And um, so it, it, it is going to move off of some of the larger moves that we see within the biotech space. Um, and the run-up that it, it, you know, a broad part of the market has had, um, it would make sense for it to come back in a bit. But again, and this is something that we talk about every single week, um, looking at it from a duration perspective and is it a trade, is it a longer term investment, right? So I think it, it, especially, especially um, in a market like today where we certainly saw volatility come back in this week, even on the days um, stocks were up, it was still very choppy sessions, right? So um, you have to ask yourself, is it a trade? Is it longer term? I think the kind of investor you are, it's probably one of the most important times um, through your trading history career that you should be asking yourself that question. Yeah. Are you a trader? Are you an investor? Are you going to be holding, you know, long term? I mean, because I guess the, the volatility this week was centered around today. Anyway, it was the retail sales numbers as expected were, were far worse than expected. Um, so, I mean, I think retail sales is what, but I mean, the market did bounce back pretty significantly from that. Um, here is the S and P one. One thing I did notice on the S and P and on the NASDAQ, less so on the NASDAQ, um, th that we've had declining volume on the up weeks as we have gotten higher, the volume has declined and declined and declined. And, and then on top of that, we finally had our reversal week this week, which we have, a, you know, reversal bars, a red candle after a green candle. And we have a, a, a little bit higher. The volume has picked up a little bit. Um, and that, that's also the same on the QQQ, uh, on the QQQ as it is on the S&P. So the S&P had this kind of declining volume. And now the volume has come back. It's gotten a little bit more significant. I believe, judging from these technical patterns, I think that that next week is going to be a very pivotal week, um, you know, because the 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 uh, the most of the country has reopened. So the re, the reopening, um, you know, expectation of reopening, you know, in, in trading, we always say buy the rumor, sell the news. The, the reopening has happened for the most part, not in places like New York, but in places like Florida, places like Texas. Um, you know, and, and, and many, I would say some, I think that I heard a statistic saying about 45 states um, have pretty much had some kind of a reopening or partial reopening, if not all, um, by, by May 15th. So now it's a question of what happens next. And, uh, and according to these charts, the charts line up with the, the, the obviously the shutdown, selling off on, going into the shutdown on the, on the start of the pandemic, and then the, the rally back as we've kind of gotten a grasp on things and mm -hmm. the expectation to reopen and stimulus has kind of, kind of kicked in. And of course, you know, I, I, as I said very early on, you know, we've had one stimulus, two stimulus, three stimulus. Will we have more? It looks like we, we need more. Um, so, Yeah, it's interesting, um, the patterns that you have called out here, because um, when we saw those three weeks where there was significant momentum to the upside, mm -hmm. um, part of it was, okay, well, nothing has really changed. And we know that earnings are not going to be good. We know that, you know, revenue is going to be declined across most of the services industries um, and retail. Mm -hmm. So when you think about the market as a discounting mechanism, perhaps it was looking forward to the reopening. We knew that was coming. We're seeing the volatility come back in because the next three, four weeks are going to matter 
with data and how it looks like after things have started to open up. I know in New Jersey, I think um, the Friday before Memorial Day, beaches are going to be reopened. That's next Friday. So that week, the last week of May, first week in June, I think when you start to look at the second and third weeks um, of June and that data, perhaps this is what the market is looking towards, that, that, that there is going to be volatility on the horizon. And um, after such a, a big run-up, it, it it could also be, you know, in a consolidation phase at this point too. So I think I just think there's a lot of variables over the next three to four weeks. Um, next week we have earnings coming out. Walmart is one of them. Uh, so we saw the poor retail sales data. What I'm going to look for with uh, the retailers coming out next week is what they're saying with forward guidance. That's going to be um, an important factor. The other thing is. After next week, earnings for the most part has, wind, has wound down, right? Yeah. So then we go back into that vacuum that we were in when lockdown started, where there is no corporate news for the most part. Everything is trading uh, predicated on what's happening from a macro perspective. So yeah. that always makes it a little bit dicey, too. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I think that what we, what we will see is that with the absence of earnings, of refocus back on to... Um, the the pandemic and the re, the the possible resurgence after the pand pandemic, depending on how the reopening goes, and I think that 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 what we will probably see and what would would be healthier for the market, meaning for a more bullish for the market, is if we don't sell off and we consolidate and hold the gains. If here on the Dow, I think it's really evident because the Dow did not bounce up, you know, anywhere as much as as the Nasdaq or or even the S and P. But if, if we don't sell off and we just kind of consolidate and hold the gains, that would be the bullish outcome. That would be very healthy technically. If, if, and that would also probably correspond with that there is no massive resurgence in, in coronavirus cases and, and that the numbers kind of stay at pace and the, flir, the, the, the curve stays flattened. Um, if we do see a big resurgence in, in COVID cases, then I think that um, that you know possibly you could see more volatility and more uh, more sell side concern, um, you know, and that's just just my thoughts in in looking at these chart patterns. Yeah, well, you also have to factor in too now the trade tensions with the U.S. and China are heating up again, and we saw what happened last year um, with pockets of volatility. It was all around will phase one get done and that sort of thing. I feel like. Um, the rhetoric is even more heated now, not just on the trade front, but there's also a lot of blame being put back and forth. And um, it, I think that's going to be really key. So when you get out of earnings, in addition to healthcare, I think U.S. China trade, that's going to be the big topic of conversation once again. I totally forgot about that today. That was the other reason that we had gapped down was that the the trade talk rhetoric and, and blame and finger pointing between the U.S. And, and China. And I think that that's certainly going to have a big effect because now we've kind of the the whether whether the reopening goes well or not or cases increase or not the worst is over right we we've gotten through the 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 lion's share of this and now it's going to be you know who's going to pay for this um, and and obviously the uh, the U.S. and China are, are kind of going at it and of course you know we'll, we'll see how that plays out. We'll do our next slide. So the next. Uh, the next thing I wanted to mention is the USL. And we know obviously all the trouble that oil saw and went through. Um, you can see that by the massive uh, drop and downtrend line. And um, you know you can see that the moving averages clearly are all trending down. This was the big breakdown when we had a, uh, a, a, a really a, 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 a market's failure to want to take delivery on the forward future contract when the, when the oil contract got so, so low that it actually um, went virtually negative so that no uh, oil traders would want to get some de oil delivered to their doorstep. Um, and then of course the market recovered some, but now that demand is recovering and that the company country is starting to reopen a little bit, um, you know, we have a, a, a nice bounce back. And of course, finally, we have gold. And here we have the gold chart. Like I had mentioned that the US dollar has continually gotten stronger and stronger. Uh, the reason the dollar is getting stronger and stronger is because as the potential for default increases, it actually reduces the money supply. And as it reduces the money supply, 
uh, the dollar will get stronger because that's a reduction of supply and the demand stays stable. But what eventually ends up happening is, is that the alternative to the dollar in this case is also going up, meaning that the gold is rising in value faster than the U.S. dollar is. And uh, you can see here gold is setting up to break out uh, above 164 is the breakout zone. Um, and then that would, uh, would really take us to, to the previous high, which is around 1900, 2000. And again, guys, listen, we had a little bit of technical difficulties today, um, you know, but obviously uh, we wanted to always uh, invite you here to the, to the Friday, re, uh, re, uh, the Friday, uh, um, Friday market updates and um, Friday view. So, um, so needless to say, you're always welcome to join us. We do our market uh, weekly review on Friday at 4.15. Uh, that's me and Jill Molandrino. Uh, we also have up to upcoming trading competitions. If you want to stay tuned to those, you could find us at Dash Trader on all the various different social media links. You could also go to the One Best Trader competition. Either way, thank you so much and uh, see you next week. Bye-bye.